Hi everyone, I am back with another video and this time I am back as a voiceover for this artwork. It has been a long time since I have done voiceovers. I felt like I couldn't just upload this artwork without saying a thing or two about my process, especially because this is officially my first time doing a 3D paper illustration where all of the elements are all hand drawn. I've done collages before, but I mostly stick with digital collages. And so I feel like this is definitely a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And with any fresh start that we do, we're not always going to be amazing at it. With this video, I wanted to share the things that I've learned as I explore this different medium for myself and the things that I'm hoping to improve so that the next time that I do this kind of artwork again, which I'm hoping will be relatively soon in the future, then I know what to avoid and I can create a better piece and a seamless process. And if you relate to that, then hopefully you can take away some tips and tricks in this video as well, especially if you're planning on creating a 3D paper illustration just like this one. And without further ado, let's get started. The concept came to me just before going to sleep where I have all of these thoughts and all of these ideas in my head that prevent me from falling asleep, which unfortunately happens way more frequently than I would like. And a method to alleviate that is to write down all of my thoughts and all of my ideas onto my phone. Unfortunately, I rarely look at my phone for ideas whenever I am in need of one. And a lot of the times when I look back at these really rushed notes that I write in the middle of the night, some of them just don't make sense. So once they're on my phone, they're pretty much as good as forgotten. Fortunately for this one, I had the sudden and strong urge to create a 3D paper illustration. And I actually had so many elaborate reasons as to why this was such a good idea at the time. Unfortunately, I had already forgotten all of those reasons, but that doesn't matter because we've already created the artwork and I really enjoyed it and I would like to create more. The concept for the artwork itself actually is very similar to how I came about the idea of creating my very own 3D paper illustration. It is all about having your thoughts and your ideas keep you up or keep you company in the middle of the night just when you're about to go to bed. And it is based on a line that I wrote in my journal that says, the clouds are my bed and the ceiling is my stars. So with that line, it already gave me an imagery for the elements that I wanted to include in this artwork. And from there, I started to explore what other elements I would like to include and how else I could really use clothing, hair, the pose, the expression on her face and colors to really communicate that concept to somebody who is just viewing this artwork for the first time. The sketching process began with the figure, which is of course the focal point of our illustration. It is a self-expression type of illustration and a concept, so of course it has to depict a girl. And I am a portrait artist at heart, so of course I have to include a face in there somewhere. But I've only recently gotten back into drawing a couple months ago and it's really going strong. However, I've only been practicing how to draw portraits and faces. I haven't really been going outside of my comfort zone and doing more complicated poses. This is definitely one of them. So I had to use a reference which you may have seen earlier. I took a photo of myself and then I used that as a reference for the pose. I used 
my imagination and my existing knowledge of the human body that I haven't forgotten and tried to create a pose as best as I could. I was pretty happy with the outcome of that and when deciding on what clothes I wanted to draw on the figure, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted so I grabbed tracing paper and drew the clothes on top of that so I don't end up messing the figure that I have drawn underneath. I also did the same thing for the hair and other elements such as the owl which I will be adding on later as an added companion to our character right here. The good thing about tracing paper is that you are able to play around with the composition as well as the different elements that you are including in your illustration. So for example, if I just so happen to not be happy with the hairstyle that I've chosen as well as the clothes that I've chosen or I'm not happy with the positioning of the different elements that I want to add onto this composition, then I can just either grab a new piece of tracing paper and start from scratch or I can take that tracing paper with the element and move it around and kind of see whether I prefer it in one position or in a different position. For example, the owl. So later on, I will actually be moving the owl into a different position compared to the sketch. So that is just one of the advantages of using tracing paper when it comes to your initial sketches. Whilst I enjoyed the process of using tracing paper to play around with all the different elements, I definitely got way too carried away with this sketch and I started to refine it even though I should have just left it as a rough sketch. And the reason why I would prefer to have left it as a rough sketch is because it doesn't give me the opportunity to compare my finished artwork to the sketch. If you're like me where you have a sketch and then you create the final artwork on a separate piece of canvas or separate piece of paper, then there's opportunity for those two things to be different as much as you try to create them exactly the same. And that pretty much happened to me with this artwork. I ended up liking the sketch a whole lot more than the finished artwork when it came to drawing the proportions, the facial expression, and just everything else. So next time when I create another 3D paper illustration or even just another illustration where there is a sketch that is separate to the final artwork, that sketch will only be rough instead of refined. After creating my sketch, I move on to creating the layers that I will be using to turn this illustration into 3D. And this is where I realized that I should have planned a whole lot more. As I was doing my sketch, that is when the planning started. And by the time I finished it, that is when all of the planning ended. Obviously, I have never done this before, so I didn't exactly know what to really plan for. With this, I knew that it was going to be only a trial run. That was my first mistake. I should have definitely tried to turn this into more of a finished piece rather than framing it in my head as a trial run because I ended up using scrap paper. I told myself that this is a trial run. I don't want to use fancy paper. I just want to use the paper that I already have right now and just put that into good use. I used cardstock for this and it came in strips, in narrow strips, which meant that I could only really draw specific and small body parts. I knew I wanted to isolate the arms from the upper arm and I knew I wanted to isolate the head and the hair as well as the stars. I initially wanted to isolate the clothes, the nightgown that she is wearing, but eventually I kind of chickened out and I left it as part of the entire body as one whole piece. During this process, I definitely learned a lot of things when it comes to 3D paper illustration. Just like what I mentioned a couple minutes ago, I 
didn't plan ahead and I didn't realize that the paper that I was using in my sketchbook wasn't quite thick enough to be used for 3D paper art. The paper that I should use needs to be thicker and sturdy so that it holds its shape, especially once I assemble everything. That is why I ended up using cardstock. However, because I used watercolors, which you will see me use later, I realized that the cardstock, because it's not suitable for watercolors, it warped and it buckled, which made it lose its shape, which then didn't really provide that sturdiness that really showed the depth of 3D paper art. Even though I applied foam tape on the back of these layers, it still didn't provide as much depth as I initially hoped because the paper was so warped. And just like what I mentioned before regarding a refined sketch, as you can see, I am trying to redraw all of these elements one by one onto the cardstock and I'm trying to replicate them as best as I could. And take note that the cardstock is not transparent, so I'm actually not sure how these pieces will go together. I definitely struggled with the body parts, for example, the arms. I managed to work around it but I think I would definitely change this part in future 3D paper illustrations. I'm not entirely sure how just yet, but we'll see. When I did the background, I knew that I wanted to paint it with gouache, and so I gathered a variety of shades of navy blue, some dark purples or indigo, a magenta, white, a lighter shade of blue, as well as a yellow ochre to create a very messy and painterly style of clouds that will be surrounding her. However, even though I had a variety of colors with the paint, I didn't have an initial plan of what the clouds were going to look like, especially to separate the background from the foreground clouds. I just started painting the clouds that will be in the foreground the same exact way that I painted the background. But instead, what I should have done is I should have made them a lot lighter or a different shade, focused more on the white or maybe on the blue or the yellow or the pink so that there's a little bit more interest or depth that I would have achieved in the final artwork. When it came to painting the figure as well as the different elements and the body parts that will be going onto this artwork, unfortunately the previous decisions that I had made greatly affected this process so it wasn't as easy or as seamless as I would have liked. For example, the fact that I used scrap cardstock for all the different body parts just meant that I didn't have cardstock that was big enough for the body. So I ended up using another paper that I just had lying around. Unfortunately, it was just so absorbent that anytime I would use a lot of water, instead of the paint spreading around, it would just stay in that spot, which actually made blending the watercolors really difficult. And because I used different types of paper, I also struggled to achieve the exact same shade of skin, for example, which I managed to correct. I managed to work around it. However, in the future, I will definitely try to use the exact paper type or the correct paper type, which I'm hoping would be a thick watercolor paper. I also made the mistake of cutting the pieces very early and before painting on them, which just made painting on each individual piece just a little bit tricky. Once again, it is my lack of planning for the finished artwork and what I wanted it to look like, especially when it comes to lighting and colors. I didn't think about where the shadows were going to be until it was last minute when I was painting each individual arm and I still managed to work around it once again but in the future I think I just need to have some kind of reference of where the light is going to be and then I'll be able to hopefully paint them in such a way that it creates a very seamless look. And so we approach the last step 
of this artwork, which is the assembly. And as you can see, I have added foam tape on the backs of these 3D elements, and I will be assembling all of them so that I create the final artwork. I think in the future, I will try and experiment with various heights for the foam tape so that I can really achieve more dimension. However, for this one, I was pretty intent on just using one layer of foam tape because I didn't want to create too much bulk, especially because this is only a trial run and also because this is going in my sketchbook. So I didn't want to bulk up my sketchbook too much. However, I think in the future it will definitely be to my advantage if I use a way more foam tape and try and experiment as well with way more layers so that I can really achieve a nice 3D paper illustration. So that ends the commentary that I have for this artwork and in this video. I definitely have a lot of artist notes for this artwork. However, it is only just the beginning and I can't wait to actually make more 3D paper illustrations just like this one. I think I am really enjoying exploring the whimsy and the softness in my art style and also just going outside of my comfort zone with the different mediums and trying to blend that all together with the mediums that I already know and love to use, such as the watercolors, pencils, ink, and gouache. I think I've found a different way of using mixed media and I can't wait to do more and also to share more of that with you. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next video.